Hi, uh, I'm Lydell, and I'll be talking about uh, growing uh, the tent. Um, Daniel uh, mentioned that before the launch, that uh, the goal of building apps uh, is to not uh, focus on dApps. We want all types of uh, apps, and the best way of doing that, the premise of this talk, is to include HTTP in the story. Um, to make my point, I will go over some interesting things from the past, uh, how IPFS interacted with HTTP. Uh, mainly, let's uh, address elephant in the room. Uh, around 2015 and 2018, when I uh, joined uh, IPFS full-time, uh, what we had was this meme that IPFS will, will replace HTTP to build uh, the web. Uh, well, it's... Uh, from the Internet Archive. Uh, it's no longer there. So are, are we using IPFS now? It's 2024. Uh, no, what happened, we, instead of uh, this adversarial position, what we did, we became part of the web. And I feel uh, years later, um, the approach of evolution rather than revolution uh, is the thing that survived. Um, quick uh, uh, look at uh, the interop story between IPFS and the web. We started with a very basic concept of uh, a gateway where content address, content path is prefixed with a location, which sounds strange, but it gives you out of the box, it's a location, the location is HTTP server, and uh, that gives you from the day one interoperability with every HTTP library, every HTTP client. And it works fine even today if you control the origin. Um, if you don't, then random people can publish things under the same origin, access the same cookies, uh, same web APIs. So that's why we extended the tent even further by introducing subdomain gateways. We moved the identifiers, which anyone can mint, um, to the subdomain, and now the tent grew and suddenly IPFS is in every browser. Uh, your every, every website suddenly published on IPFS suddenly became compatible with uh, the security model on the web, where origin, protocol, port, and uh, authority component, which is usually the DNS name, is used uh, for isolating websites from each other. Uh, and where we are today, is, is that the end of the story? Well, no. Uh, today, uh, kind of like in a wider sense, uh, the gateways now support trustless response modes. The trustless gateway is a gateway which returns you all the information um, as a client to be able to verify data yourself. And every gateway is a trustless gateway, but some gateways are only trustless gateways. So for example, here we have public good utility gateway at uh, trustless gateway.link, and it supports block and car responses. It also supports IPNS uh, name resolution. Um, and it gives you the power of verifying data yourself. The second thing that was introduced uh, in the present time is ability to delegate routing queries to some remote uh, server. This is a very simple spec at IPFS spec website for making queries uh, for making uh, vendor agnostic uh, queries for where the content uh, is provider, uh, provided, uh, where are providers for the content. And uh, the key takeaway here is that it's not specific to any routing system. This is a vendor agnostic API, um, and there's a public utility at delegated IPFS.dev, which you can ask for providers of a CID. And what you will get in return are results from both IPNI at CID.contact and also AminoDHT, which is uh, the public swarm of IPFS. And if you ask that endpoint uh, using the NDJSON uh, request format, you will get a streaming response. And here's a demo. It's a ASCII of a hello being published to IPFS. And I want providers for that. There's a lot of providers. And if you make this request today, you will start getting responses, and you will likely get a lot of responses from IPNI instantly because it's just like a 
database query, and then you will see uh, DHT responses trickling down. And some of them, they say they speak HTTPS. What's up with that? It's like, um, what if I ask them using the Trustless Gateway API for that specific CAD? Oh, look, I got the data back. But did I hit IPFSIO? Did I hit the dweb.link, uh, the trustless gateway.link? No, I, I learned about the direct provider and I retrieved data from it. Um, and before the launch, there was uh, a demo of my colleagues, uh, both Alex and Russell uh, mentioned that in their talk. I, I, I make a stronger point. I, made, I, I used the uh, inbrowser.link, which was built with Helia Verified Fetch, and I set it up to use a gateway that does not exist at example.com. So request to centralized uh, gateway like IPFSIO will always fail. And then I asked that service worker gateway to retrieve data for me, the same CID, hello. Um, so the request to the example.com failed, but the content loaded because through the delegated routing, it learned about the direct provider and it used just plain HTTP to retrieve it. And it did the actually use HTTP, but it did the IPFS in a sense of verifying hashes. So what's the future of uh, having those basic primitives? How does the future between IPFS and HTTP look like? Um, I, think we, I think we need to think about the evolution of the patterns uh, and how IPFS and HTTP started. We started a fully delegated trust. There's no sugar coating. It was all or nothing. You, the totality of IPFS was delegated to remote HTTP server, uh, routing, finding providers, uh, retrieving data from them, verifying the hashes match, and even reassembling files from something like UnixFS. Everything happened on that remote server. You did nothing. You just got bytes back. Then we introduced delegated retrieval when, uh, thanks to trustless uh, gateway and trustless response types, now we were able to cross off verification and deserialization and move that to the client. And I think we are in a place, uh, in and, and, and the time is right, to start shifting and starting enabling clients to do more themselves. I can fetch from the gateway trustlessly, I just need a mechanism to learn about the gateways that have the data already, that don't have to do the recursive retrieval. So we want to shift towards the direct retrieval where providers expose data over HTTP. In addition to things like BitSwap, it's not a replacement. We are not replacing, IPFS is not replacing anything. Uh, the HTTP is not replacing BitSwap. Uh, but the, the client should be able to learn about that and, uh, and leverage that information. Um, and what are incentives for people to start uh, exposing data over HTTP? Alex, uh, in the morning talk, had a very good point. When it comes to transports, WebRTC, web transport, uh, and even secure web sockets, you don't have that many peers. Uh, it's also like tricky to set up, and it will, it will take time for providers to announce over transports that work in browsers. HTTP works in browsers. It was browsers were built with built-in support, trust me. So it's the, it's the, the most robust uh, option. It's the most robust transport you can do. And the only cost as a storage provider is just set up the TLS cert, just an and then announce it. And it's easier for you to find people who know how to work with HTTP tools. They don't even need to know anything about IPFS. You can put uh, standard uh, CDNs and caching in front of it, and that would likely save you time. And it's not replacing anything. The WebRTC direct and web transport can live next to it. And the cli let, let client decide what's the best, what's the most efficient. The client might reach the WebRTC uh, limit of 500 connections or uh, whatever it is today in, in Chromium uh, and can fall back to the HTTP, right? Um, it's a chicken and egg problem. Oh, why would I invest time into exposing things over HTTP if the clients do not benefit, like will not use it because it's only BitSwap? It's just bit swap. Well, Alex this morning uh, showed that you know it's a, you, you can use the latest Helia verified fetch, um, and, and and it will probe uh, HTTP multi others if it learns about some of them from IPNI, um, 
and you do, do right now it's like racing, but over time it will likely prioritize retrieval of HTTP. Uh, next, I think by the end of the year, what we want to do, at least uh, at IP Shipyard, will be pushing towards uh, bringing HTTP retrieval support into uh, Boxo, and that will trickle down to Rainbow, which is backing IPFS IO and DF.link. So if you are a storage provider and want public gateways to not spam you with much bit swap, uh, that's an incentive. And then the same library is used by Kubo, uh, so it will trickle down to all the standalone users. Uh, and at the same time, Web Transport and WebRTC Direct will complement it. So the direct retrieval will be either from the big providers over HTTP, if not WebRTC, Web Transport, maybe even Secure Web Sockets, whatever works. Um, so how to give it a try today? Run your HTTP gateway. It's not difficult. There's a dedicated binary which implements the specs. Uh, try to just give it a try. Try to announcing your gateway using uh, HTTP multi other. Um, let's start with that. We may need uh, something more refined, but for today that should do the trick. It already works for all data that's on uh, web free storage slash Siracha. Um, or you can run your own delegated routing endpoint if you want just to implement, uh, experiment in sandbox. And you can test with uh, verified fetch. You can also go to in browser.link. That gateway will also race uh, the discovered gateways against uh, the public gateways. Um, and maybe like at this point, it's enough uh, for today, but m m for the future where where do we want to go from there? What, what's the end game for IPFS and HTTP retrieval? Um, I narrowed it down to th uh, like two things. First one is, uh, it's kind of like ecosystem-wide uh, improvement proposal, uh, but uh, right now the all the CIDs are assumed equal. They are not. The, the roots are more important, the entities of file, the roots of files in directories are more important. Um, so the idea is that to introduce the path affinity uh, as an optional hint that the client can send to gateways. And if one of the side effects of that is that we clients would not pay any like performance penalty by doing the retrieval of subsets of data. Uh, it could give a context of uh, the request uh, we, while asking for a block or a partial DAG. And the second, uh, and second uh, improvement proposal is to have an ability to only fetch the IPFS metadata. Uh, and then if you learn about the shape of a DAG, you know which byte ranges are responsible for which block. And if you have that information, then you no longer need the trustless gateway at all. You can make an HTTP range request to any HTTP server that has the file. So you can imagine a big video or ISO image. There are already dozens, like millions of servers that host the data. Uh, so if you are just able to learn about IPFS uh, met, uh, structure in a request to IPFS specific service, then you can grow the tent of potential providers beyond IPFS providers. Every HTTP server could become IPFS provider. Um, and that's like a big TBD. Um, uh, data onboarding of an HTTP is even a bigger TBD, but if you are interested in details, grab office hours. Um, I'm happy to chat uh, on the direction, but I feel uh, the end game of being able to leverage just plain HTTP and range requests in as a complementary transport to BitSwap and uh, lip 2 p transports, uh, it will grow the tent. You, can know, uh, you cannot have bigger tent than uh, entire Web2. And that's it, thanks. <laughs>